Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're going to... Uh, I don't know how to start this video, to tell you the truth. So we're going to compare three J'adore lures. We're going to compare the 2010 edition, which I have a full-size bottle here. And then we're going to compare the 2017 to that. And we're going to compare the new 2023 edition, which I have this sample right here. Needless to say, I'm not going to buy this bottle. I'm not going to buy this fragrance. But let's get into it to see what the differences are, which one I like the best, and all that good stuff. So I received this little thing, and I have the sample of the 2017 edition, and I worked for Dior whenever this was out, and it was one of my top selling fragrances because I absolutely loved it, which is the Lore edition. So actually there was a 2007 edition, which it doesn't have a perfume listed for it. The notes for that were Sweet Pea, Peony, Magnolia Violet, Champaka, as well as Musk. I never got to smell this. This is way before my time with Dior. This is even way before my time before I could even afford anything by Dior. So I never smelled the original Lore, which launched in 2007. But I did get to smell this one. And this is the 2010 edition. So this one is the one that is the eldest at this point. Look at that bottle. So it was really rumored that Dior, uh, they used to package this very differently to the original J'adore. It came in this clean, crisp, white box. And you opened it and it was wrapped in tissue. It had the CD logo holding the tissue paper together. And there was a card in there letting you know that this was handcrafted and that it was the highest perfumery that Dior offered for J'adore. And it was, like I said, supposed to be a handmade bottle. I'm not sure if that's handmade or not, but these were all Eau de Parfums or they were called Eau de Parfums Concentré or like Strez or Intense. It just depends on what marketing gimmick they were giving you then, but it was an Eau de Parfum at the end of the day. And yeah, so this one came out in 2010. The perfumer for this was Francois Dimashi. And we're going to focus more on this guy and comparing it to the new edition because the 2017 was just, it was not a hit. It was a miss. And the fragrance itself kind of just added a couple of notes and they were kind of, you know, lost in the background. But this one came out in 2010. The top notes for this are going to be Jasmine and May Rose. The heart notes for this one are going to be Vanilla Absolute Tonka Bean. And the base is going to consist of patchouli, amber, and labdanum. So we got this very beautiful elevated version of J'adore. If you know J'adore, the 1999 release, the original, the OG, that fragrance is jasmine and elong elong. It's sexy, it's soft, it's delicate, but it's strong and seductive. And this one itself is going to have all those qualities but it just amplifies it. It adds some spices in it. It's going to make it a lot more luxurious. It literally smells like if you were dripping in gold. It's just an incredibly luxurious fragrance. And I think the spices add a little bit more character to this fragrance itself. Now, I don't think that this was very popular with younger people, but I think that once you hit a certain age of like 25 and up, you probably enjoyed this fragrance because it's the classic J'adore with the beautiful, sexy, empowering smell to it. But then you add the luxury elements to it, those beautiful refined moments to it. And it just made the fragrance so much better. Then we moved on to the 2017 edition, which is also by Francois Dimashi. They just changed the bottle essentially. And they added Ilong Ilong. They added Jasmine Grand Forum Absolute. <laughs> and they added Tuberose. For me, it's the tuberose that ruined it. I think that they really took the spices out of it and they added a grandma note in it. So it's like you were trying to make a fragrance a little bit more refined, a little bit more modern. And then we decided to add tuberose, which tuberose is, is notorious for coming off as a grandma scent. And I think that that kind of is what ruined the 2017 formulation for me. I never got a bottle. I do have it to smell here. I did test it out. To me, it's just a no-go. I think that if you were going to go for one of them out of these two, I would probably go for the 2010 edition because it still holds that very luxurious refinement, that very nice, deep, feminine energy that's very empowered, strong, and confident. And the 2017 lacks a little bit of that. It kind of took some of those elements out of it. I don't know. I'm not sure what Francois Dimashi was doing at the end of his career. He is a brilliant perfumer, and he has launched some of the most iconic fragrances for the house of Dior, but at that point in time in his career, I think he was kind of getting burnt out. Just my opinion. And now we have Francis Kirkshan. Hold for applause. 
I'm really going to try to go into this review without being mean. It's just a little difficult because we I'll flash a picture of the new bottle. The bottle itself kind of is a little bit lazy to me when we're comparing it to that intricate detail that we get on this fragrance itself. But it's just so well done. It looks like little layers that were actually wrapped by hand. I mean, they're not, but it does look very nice. It looks very luxurious. I think that this is timeless. It could have, you know, lasted for years and years and this bottle would still look beautiful tomorrow. Now, what changed is they kind of went for a more modern artistic approach when it comes to the bottle design. It looks like dripping gold and I get that that is the whole point of this fragrance collection. The inspiration is dripping gold. I mean, we see all the commercials and she's always ripping pearls off. She's always getting naked. She's swimming in gold bathtubs. I mean, Charlize Theron does it all for this fragrance and she does a great job. But we launched this one in 2023 and I was very excited. I really thought, you know, Francis Kirkshawn's going to come in. You know, he's going to really tweak everything and make it a little bit better and make it a little bit more refined and really work on Francois Dimashi's work and... I think that both of their work mixed together would have caused, you know, great perfumery to happen, but I was wrong. <laughs> I was very, very wrong. And let's just say it's, it's, it's a disappointing day, at least for me. So let's get into the notes. The notes for the new one are going to be Jasmine, Grandforia, Grand, Grand Fl I will list down here below. We have Rose and Defolia Absolute. We also have Orange Blossom Absolute. We lose the May Rose, we lose the Vanilla, we lose the Tonka Bean, we lose the Patchouli, we lose the Amber, we lose the Labdanum. And we get Orange Blossom and Rose Centifolium. I don't know. So I have it here. I did test both of them out and I have them on sprayer cards. This is the new one. This is really just, I don't know. I'm not trying to be mean here. It's it's candy-like. It smells like something that we would get from Givenchy. It smells like My Way by Giorgio Armani. It smells like La Via Belle. I mean, it could be anything at this point. It could be any other fragrance on the market. You could repackage it into any other bottle and slap a different label on it and throw it down the production line and say it's a new perfume, but it is not J'adore. It has nothing to do with J'adore whatsoever. When you think J'adore, you think Ilang Ilang, you think Jasmine, you think a very sexy, refined scent that is floral, but yet it's light. It is powerful, yet delicate. I mean, it is a really well-balanced scent. And J'adore Lore, the 2020 edition, really captivated that and added luxury to it. This one itself, candy cane, floral, realness. I mean, if that is what you are up for, then we have it here. You know, it, it is it is what it is. I mean, it's really, really sad, like I said, because I really thought that Francis Kirkshawn was going to come into the house of Dior and really do something very different. And he has made some really nice ones like Dior Riviera. If anyone has an extra bottle, you know, you can send it to me for free. <laughs> it kind of is coming off as a one trick pony at this point. I don't think he's really meant to work on the classic fragrances. And for Dior to let him do this to me is a little bit disappointing because J'adore is just such an iconic classic fragrance for the house of Dior. And I think it's even more classic and iconic than Miss Dior. And for him to come in and ruin such a beautiful creation, it's quite sad. I think even though uh, Francois Dimashi used to do the same thing sometimes with other fragrances. He never really messed with J'adore. He would launch his own new ones. Um, and yeah, I mean, he kind of got rid of the 2007 one, but that had nothing to do with J'adore either. And yeah, he just really kind of respected the vibe and the boundary that they were going for when it came to this fragrance and what they were trying to symbolize to the world. And I get that change is needed for a fragrance to be successful and to be modern and classic and to keep up with times. But we've learned from houses like Garland, like Chanel, that that is not necessary. You can come up with flankers. You can discontinue them after, you know, they're no longer useful, but you don't mess with the classics. And I think that they messed with J'adore Lore and the new one itself is just, it's not Lore. The name Lore means gold and you want something that smells like gold it smells luxurious it smells rich and this is not one that smells rich or that smells like gold this fragrance has a candy like gleam to it 
with some nice floral elements and it's not a bad scent it's just not j'adore and i i hate to say that because j'adore laura was probably my favorite iteration of j'adore that there ever was and that there ever will be they ruined it a little bit in 2017 but we can still get over it and see the beauty of the fragrance but the 2023 edition threw everything out and yeah it's just not it it's just not the one that I would go for. So let me know down in the comments which one you prefer. Do you prefer one over the other? Are you happy with this new launch? Are you not happy with this new launch? Let me know all of that down below in the comments. Also, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more fragrance-related content. Until next time, you guys, take care. Bye.